Hi everyone, I'm going to show you today how to use uh, some of the location features built into TP for Desktop. We're going to look at how to search for locations, how to save them, how to navigate back to them, and then we'll take a little look at import and export and how you can use that in conjunction with other tools such as uh, Google Earth, which I know uh, many of you like to use when planning your photography. So let's jump right in. We're looking here at TP for Desktop. Um, this is uh, version 111, which is the, the current version. And I've got essentially a clean install here, so no saved locations. Um, first thing to, to say is uh, one point that sometimes confuses folks is that locations is where you save places you want to go back to. It's not where you go to find the name of a town or a national park or something like that. To do the, the search, you can do that down here in the search search bar. So click to enter uh, place name search term. So let's search for somewhere. Um, I thought we might visit Australia today. Glasshouse Mountains. I have family that live down here. It's a beautiful part of the world in Queensland. Um, so what I did there, I type in the search term Glasshouse Mountains and I simply hit the return key or the enter key or you can click the uh, the little search icon there and TP goes off and says where do I find uh, the coordinates for Glasshouse Mountains and you can see that I started off with the map in Boulder Colorado and here I am now in Australia let me just zoom out so you can get your sense of where you are in the world there we are so there's Australia and zoom back in and indeed we're in uh, Glasshouse Mountains. So let's say that we want to fine-tune this location a little bit before we save it. Uh, you can take that and say drag the pin there. We can zoom in a little bit more. And let's assume that here on Sahara Road that's the place where we think we might want to uh, set up for a photograph at some point in the future. So that's what we want to save. Um, to save it we come over here to locations you can click plus and it says enter a location name uh, the program goes off and says well what's the sensible name for this what's a good default name and it's come up with Glasshouse House Mountains Australia and it shows you the distance in whatever your current units are from where the pin is to where that town is and that, that's a town name in fact so we can either keep that or we can we can modify it which is what I'm going to do I'm going to call it Sahara Road, comma, click OK, and there we go, it's saved. Uh, let's say we want another location. I'm not doing a lot of planning when I'm doing this. This is just to show you how to use locations. I can drag and drop the pin. I can click plus, or there's a uh, keyboard shortcut. You can do shift plus, which is what I just did there. Um, comes up with the proposed name again. I'm going to change that to Canarin Road, Glasses Mountains Australia, do there, and we've saved that too. Now, you may ask, well, why can't I just search and save in one hit? And, and the simple answer is, quite often you might want to search for a place, but it's not somewhere you're ever going to go back to, it's not somewhere you particularly care about, so you don't want to save it. So rather than forcing you to save every location you can search here and then if it's somewhere you want to keep you can come and add it here with the, the plus button if you want to delete it that's the uh, uh, minus key here so let's say we want to navigate back to our Sahara Road location we select that and we click go and as the pin has moved back I can go back to Canarin Road there we go I can also just double click here on the coordinates double click here on the coordinates and so forth. You can click on the name to re relocate it, so let's say we we know that Glasses Mountains is Australia, so we could get rid of that, get rid of that, boom, and those are updated as you can see. You can sort, clicking the column headers, you can filter, so if you have a large uh, a large list you can filter it down by typing a few letters of the um, of the name there. So that's uh, in a nutshell that's how to uh, search down here 
how to save a location by clicking plus, give it a name and double click on the coordinates or select it and click go to head back to somewhere that you've previously saved. Now one thing that you can also do here is um, you notice these other buttons import and export and uh, these are pretty handy so one thing that is very useful is the import function and that allows you to import saved locations from other applications or other data files and specifically what, what it imports is a format called KML um, which is what is used by tools such as Google Earth to store um, place marks which is uh, what they call pins for example on a map so if I flick over here to uh, a web browser here's um, somewhere I found just happened to Google around for it earlier today and um, you'll find uh, quite a lot of uh, places on the internet there are saved KML files so here we are someone some kind of person has put together this New Zealand landscape photography locations um, and they have a big long list as you can see with all the pins here in New Zealand of places that you could go to to make photographs um, around the country and it's available here as a KML file and that means that we can import that into TPE so I've downloaded this previously so what I'm going to do now is flick back to TPE I'm going to click import here's the file uh, I saved it earlier New Zealand landscape photography locations KML I select that having clicked the import button I click open and boom there we are 57 locations imported and now we can pick one of these we can go to uh, let's say stormy point look at that sounds promising uh, not not somewhere I'm familiar with I've never looked at these before so all of a sudden we've got some nice uh, data that we can explore if we were going to visit Lo uh, New Zealand and see what see what's there and understand what might be going on with the light uh, using TPE let's try another one Tom Parker Fountain where's that let's have a look okay up at Napier um, up on the coast this is a this is a place I sometimes use as a testing location because it's very close to the um, the anti-meridian you know 180 degrees away from from Greenwich um, so there we go we've imported 57 locations just like that into uh, into TPE. Similarly, if you want to uh, save your locations or you want to transfer them, say you've got um, TPE on a desktop machine and you also have it on a laptop, and you want to get the locations from this install onto another machine, you can export them. You see here it says export and in brackets that's a, a number one, and that's the number of locations I have selected. So if I click on this first one, always click on the coordinates rather than the name because that's it'll let you edit that if you click on the name. So I click there, I scroll down to the end, I've got the shift key held on my keyboard, I click Wilson Bay, that selects everything and now I have 59 locations that I can export, so I choose export and I can say uh, my TP locations save and now I have those saved as a file you can then transfer that on a USB drive or uh, via email to another machine and then you can import it uh, straight away back into another copy of the program. You can also import it into the iOS version of the, the mobile app. I'm going to show you that in a, in a separate video. Um, so let's just quick recap on what we've done. We've uh, searched, we've added locations, we know how to delete them, we know how to go back to them, we know how to rename them by clicking on the on the name, we know how to import a KML file and we know how to export our own saved locations from the program. Um, one thing I didn't mention before is that there is a feature for uh, storing notes in the desktop version of the software. So you can see here I'm, I have Arrowtown Wood selected. If I press the notes button there, pops up and there's the notes from that KML file. That one has obviously got a bunch of HTML in which doesn't come out very nicely formatted unfortunately. But you can you can change that and, and make your own notes here so there's something that's readable so I'll get rid of the guff and leave something legible there there we go so that's from that file that we downloaded uh, from the from the internet previously you can just click notes to hide that again um, let's flick now over to Google Earth what I'm going to do here 
is uh, show you how to um, transfer information from Google Earth back into TPE. So what I've done, I searched previously before a very nice location called uh, Dickey Beach, which is uh, not too far from Glasshouse Mountains in Queensland. Just zoom out a little bit there so you can see where we are. Um, Glasshouse Mountains is down, where is it? Over this way somewhere. Lansborough, yeah, VOR, Glasshouse Mountains, there it is. So I searched for uh, Dickey Beach. I'll just go through this again so you get the idea of how it works. Dickey Beach, QLD for Queensland. Off we go. It's moving over there. And then up here on the beach there is a very nice wreck of a ship that sank. I forget when it sank. I think it might be um, 100 odd years ago. I'll show you a, a photograph of that. There it is. That's the wreck. It's an iron hulled ship um, sat on the on the beach there makes for some nice photographs. So what we can do here is drop a place mark. So I use this drop add place mark pin here. I can give that a name. I can click on it. Actually I'll click on what I want to do is right click on there. Let me see if I can make that do what I want. There we are. Uh, save place as is what you want to do. And that lets you it gives you the choice. By default, it's going to save it as KMZ file or KMZ file for our American friends. Um, but we're going to choose KML because that's the format that TP for desktop in understands. Give it a name, save it. I've saved this earlier um, for the avoidance of disaster during recording demos. Um, I come back here, and this is where I can do import again. So I'm going to do import ssdiki, one location imported successfully, click OK. Uh, let's use the filter just to find it, because we now have quite a few. There it is, dicky. Double click, and there it is. I'll, let me switch to the hybrid view and zoom in. And you'll see that that's exactly the same place we had in Google Earth. But now we have it in TP and we can use all those normal tools that we have to understand how the light moves around that location. So there we go, we've uh, covered quite a lot uh, about how to use locations within TPE and how you can do import and export of KML files. Um, hope you find this useful. I'm going to record another video that shows you how to exchange your locations with TPE on iPad and iPhone and a few other options that we have there. Thanks for your time.